So in video 1228, we made a crystal cell. We made it in a sort of traditional way, using copper and magnesium, and did it with some plaster of Paris and some artificial urine, just to show that crystal cells are essentially no different from any other cell. And the issue with crystal cells is that they have an extremely high internal resistance. Now, they last a long time because of the bulk of material. They have a fixed voltage because of the electronegativity, but they have a very high internal resistance. Now, a crystal cell, I've got an example here, is identical in concept to a potato cell. Ah, here we go. And we have a potato cell right here. We'll get the same result. Now, Something very interesting happened a couple of years ago in the University of Jerusalem. The university did some studies on this, because what this actually does, and what this does, and what a lemon does, is forms a salt bridge, so electronegativity can take over and a reaction can happen. In here, we've got a pretty tough, dense material that's pretty high in resistivity, in the same way that that is. It's a very high internal resistance. And what the University of Jerusalem did was boil this. They boiled it for eight minutes. Now, eight minute boiling is enough to break down some of the cell walls, yet not completely disintegrate the potato, so it still stays like a potato. But the internal resistance is much, much lower. Because it's much, much lower, you get, I think it was 10 times more power out of it, which is pretty awesome. So, let's boil some potatoes. Two more minutes. <coughs> So here's the non-boiled potato, and it's got a voltage of 1.372 volts on it, and it is just barely lighting that LED. Now, to be absolutely clear, the potato contributes nothing to the reaction or to the battery. It is only a salt bridge allowing that reaction between the copper and the magnesium to occur. The battery will last as long as the magnesium lasts. When that magnesium is gone, the battery will die. You could, of course, put more magnesium in there, but really, to be absolutely 100% clear, the potato adds nothing. The moment, it's just a very high resistant salt bridge. So here are my boiled potatoes that I've let cool down. Let's swap it over and see what happens. <laughs> How about that? It is definitely much brighter. Okay, let's take some readings. First of all, we'll do the raw potato, and I've got it connected in series, and we're drawing 0.5 of a microamp. I mean, these LEDs will light it at incredibly low amperage, hey? Anyway, 0.5 of a microamp is enough to just barely light that LED in the raw potato. Let's try the boiled potato. Okay, we are, in fact, drawing 12 microamps from that. Now, in the paper, they did say that the potato responded better if it was cut into slices or thin cubes, so we're going to do that. Sure enough, it's jumped up to 19 microamps by having it in a slice. And the voltage is going to be round about the same, hey? So in the raw potato, it's 1.449 volts. And in the boiled potato, 1.57. So there is a slightly better voltage but a much better power draw, and that is because the boiling breaks down the skin of the cells in the potatoes, reduces the resistance of the salt bridge, and so the voltage goes up a little bit because it's not got a voltage drop through that resistance, and we're able to get so much more power out of it. I mean, I know we're talking about the difference between half a microamp and 12 microamps, but that is 24 times more power that the thing is giving out. So it's much, much better if we can lower the resistance. And that's the thing about crystal cells. They have a very high resistance, and so they're not very efficient. This potato, actually, um, has a cost associated with it where the cost of energy generation using boiled potatoes was something like, I think it's about eight pounds a kilowatt hour. The cost of using AA batteries to do the same job is something like, uh, I think it was $64 a kilowatt hour, something like that. But the university arranged these potatoes so they could light an LED lamp to light a room for 40 hours. They didn't give any details on how much magnesium they actually used. Actually, I think they used zinc. Uh, but they didn't give much details on how much they actually used or what the arrangement was. Because surface area is also going to have a huge impact. We've used a nail and a strip of magnesium. 
very low surface areas, very low grammage, and so we're getting quite low power output. But I was absolutely fascinated by that idea that you could uh, use boiled potatoes and that interesting fact how the breakdown reduces the resistance in the salt bridge to give you a much better performance. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.